Hey y'all, Crazy Jimmy here on a beautiful Sunday morning with a Vinyl Finds video for you. Uh, took a trip over to a couple of record shops. I uh, haven't had the time to do it and this weekend I did. Uh, visited Welfare Records down in Haverhill, Mass. One of my favorite uh, shops in New England. And uh, also visited... Um, a shop in uh, in Nashua, Fidelis, audio and visual uh, video, uh, and they have uh, quite the selection there that um, buddy of mine uh, Dave uh, curates for the uh, for the store. So uh, was able to to find some neat stuff that um, you know I've been wanting, and some stuff that I didn't even know uh, that you know I listened to a few snips and decided, yeah, that's pretty cool, so I'll pick it up. Um, Welfare Records is great because the selection is just, you know, the store is huge with just a massive selection, really good prices. Uh, Welfare is very fair with their prices uh, and highly recommend if you're in um, the Massachusetts area visiting or if you're from New England, uh, take a trip up to Haverhill, Mass uh, to, to visit them. And not only that, but their store hours are phenomenal. Um, they're open every single day from, I think it's 11 to 7 p.m. Uh, so check their website, but um, they're open Monday uh, through Sunday uh, till 7 p.m., which is unusual for record stores. Usually they keep banker hours, which drives me nuts um, to no end. Uh, so, but welfare, not so much. Um, anyways, let's get into it. So First one I want to show is um, Randy Burns, um, and apologize for the glare. This is in the shrink anyways, so, um, but the, the cover is just so cool. Um, this is, uh, I think, An Evening with a Magician, I think it's called, on ESP Records, the same label that had um, the Fugs on there, uh, but <clears throat> this is really good, like uh, acid folk really good acid acid folk and it sounds just like the cover uh there's good old burns there randy burns um here's the the label one of the labels pretty cool looks like randy right there is he smoking or it's like he's smoking <laughs> you can see the waif of smoke there but um just love this um cover and not only that um I love, it looks like an upside down mushroom there. It looks like a mushroom, but <laughs> um, not only is the artwork great, but the music is great too. So um, if you like acid folk from the late 60s, and I think this was what, 69, I want to say. Yep. Wait. Yeah, I think it's 69, but um, you would absolutely love that album, so seek it out. Uh, they're not uh, terribly expensive either. Um, next up, uh, been on a huge uh, Rick Nelson. He wants to go by Rick now. Rick ne on these, um, you know, once he once he picked up the Stone Canyon band um, with some really ace musicians, uh, especially Brumley on um, on uh, pedal steel. I've been on a real Rick Nelson in the Stone Canyon band kick. Uh, he released, I think, five albums with them, with, with that as a backing band, and it's Cosmic Country. Uh, started releasing them in 69, and then I think wrapped up in 74. Uh, so this was the last one I needed. Uh, this is Rick, Rick Nelson in the Stone Canyon band sings Rick Nelson. <laughs> so, um, but this is probably becoming my favorite uh besides garden party those those two this one in garden party um but you know i like all the ones he did with stone canyon band because i love that southern california uh laurel canyon cosmic country sound and no one did it better than rick nelson in the stone canyon band between 1969 and 1974 so do not uh that's a die cut by the way it's pretty cool uh, comes with a large poster, but do not hesitate on that um, if you like Cosmic Country as much as I do, especially the um, the late 60s, early 70s. Um, next up I have, this was a cool find. Uh, this is a uh, Netherlands press of 17 seconds by The Cure. 
So I'm sure you've all seen this before, but um, they're, they're becoming harder and harder to find in the States. Uh, so I needed, that's the last Cure album I needed um, from their early output. So super glad to add that bad boy. Next up is, um, this is a, a real crazy find. Um, so this is, uh, I think I showed this, I might have showed this on my last final find, but I wanted to, I, I don't think I played it yet. Um, so this is the stereo. I have the mono, but this uh, was labeled stereo. It's in the shrink. Um, I know I had, I talked about this already, but I don't think I, pl I played it. Since then, I played it, and guess what? Surprise, surprise, it's a mono spin. So even though everything on it says stereo, even the labels say stereo, even the dead wax scream stereo <laughs> it's not it's mono and i was super excited because the other the mono the other mono press i have is not as clean this is near mint near mint all the way around of um of bobby jamison really his classic 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 dream pop album uh this is like acid psych pop psych dream pop of the highest order from the late 60s, early 70s. So uh, it's under the name Chris Lucy, but make no mistake, there's a crazy story behind this, which I already went over. I'm not going to do it again. I have, There's an acid archive uh, on it that I did, but i um, super excited that that was mono because I know the stereo kind of sucks. Uh, just wanted to have it. It was in great shape, and then boom, it's mono. So woo, go me. All right. Um, Next up, um, needed uh, Evolution uh, Mono and found one on the Parlophone label. So first UK Mono, super excited to have that uh, for sure on the uh, this nice laminated sleeve design. This is the same uh, guy from The Fool that created that cool sleeve design for The Fool. Uh, he also created this sleeve design for the Hollies um, on evolution so uh one of my favorite holly's albums right there pretty good psych um next up really cool to find this um 1990 the dentist heads and how to read them um i have their very classic this is their best right here um but i didn't have this one yet it's not quite as good as their first one but it's still great uh so if you like like um like uh jesus um post-punk a little bit of post-punk um how do i explain this yeah like post-modern post-punk of the day of the late 80s uh you in the late 70s sound you would dig the dentist uh it's kind of got a pop element to it as well a little little twee um but i like that so hey um, next up, this was actually recommended by Psyche Derek, and lo and behold, there was a couple copies of each, so picked it up. Um, this is the die cut in the shrink, unfortunately, but I'm not going to take the shrink off, but you can see this is die cut. It kind of pops open on the MGM label, and you know, people look at this and they go, oh, that's bubblegum, it's crap. This is really birdsy, and I mean, this is like a great lost birds album so don't be thrown off by the reputation of this band every mother's son this album back is every bit as good as a birds album really jangly really poppy but also has a little bit of psych elements added in um and of course um i had to get their first one which you know it's easy to find um but not so easy to find with the shrink and the hype sticker but uh, this is their first one from 67. Um, Stereo Press. Might want to find the mono at some point. Uh, this one's not as good as back, but um, it's still really good. So don't be thrown off thinking there's some Turtles or Herman Hermit, Hermit's Redux. Um, it's a little better than that. Next up, um, I've been really getting into the Tumbleweed. Um, yeah, the Tumbleweed label out of Denver. Um, there was roughly nine different artists released on the Tumbleweed label, and this is one of them. 
Um, I'm starting to collect them all, um, but this is uh, Rob with two Bs, Kunkel. And um, this is like an early 70s. I want to say this was 1972. Um, acid folk, a uh, little bit of jazz in there, a little bit of acid psych, a little bit of folk. Um, a little bit of uh, Brian Wilson-esque uh, arrangements. Uh, definitely some jazz elements. A little bit of cosmic country in there too. So it's kind of like a melting pot. But almost anything on the Tumbleweed label out of Denver, Colorado. Um, there was only like nine artists released total. And a handful of albums released on the Tumbleweed back in the early 70s uh, through like mid 70s uh, but they all have a very similar sound so collect them all uh, I got more tumbleweed let's see if I can grab it let's keep to the theme here of course I didn't put it back no I didn't oh bummer or maybe I did no I didn't I'm sorry. All right. Um, I was going to show you Rudy Romero on the Tumbleweed label, but I don't know. I got more coming, though, because um, I did order a few. They're pretty cheap, so I'll show them on the next uh, go-around. Um, here was a really cool find, and this is impossible to find. It's even hard to get online. Popcorn Blizzard Explode. And no, this is not Meatloaf's first band. This is um, a different band. This is... Um, Really good pop psych. Really good pop psych, especially side one. Side one is flawless. It's on the D Light label. Um, right there. This is a uh, this is a uh, promotional pressing. Uh, but I I love this cover too, the colorful cover. But if you like pop psych, you've got to seek this out. It's so 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 good. Um, it is kind of hard to find, but the side one is flawless. Side two, it slips off a little bit, but it's still really good. Um, but just ace, ace pop psych. If you like pop psych from the late 60s, you cannot go wrong here with Popcorn Blizzard Explode on the D-Light label. Look at that. Really cool. Colorful. Uh, awesome. All right. Next up is a really neat, uh, this was a cool find. Um, this is called Heartbeat by John Mills Cockle. And this is from 1972 on the True North label, which also had uh, Bruce Cockborn uh, in his early work, which is also highly recommended. But this John Mills Cockle uh, Heartbeat album is, while it's uh, about half instrumental, half with vocals, this is like really, I was pleasantly surprised. This is like a blind buy. I bought it based on the cover. Um, I didn't even listen to any of the snippets. I'm like, that cover's cool. 1972, I'm going to like it. And sure enough, I did. Um, the best way to describe this is like early uh, craft work, but a little more menacing. Uh, and there's, you know, when the vocals come in, it's pretty menacing. But um, really, really good uh, like a craft work. Um, what else can I say? Um, like I said, it's, um, it's kind of soundtracky as far as, um, it's very sci-fi as well, but it's not boring. And, um, I do love it when the vocals come in too. So it adds a nice element. Uh, it's not all instrumental. Uh, so check out, uh, John Mills Cockle. See, O-C-K-E-L-L -L is the last name, Heartbeat. This is his first album, um, and it's on True North, but really cool. I love the cover, too. Check out the cover. I mean, that is, that is a sale right there. Let me show you the back, too. This is probably blind buy number one for me. Best blind buy I've had in a while. There's the back. Definitely a really good blind buy. I love that when that happens. And you know what? It's in the shrink. It's a near mint. And I think I paid like $10 for it. I mean, you just, you got to pull the trigger on that. All right. And I'm super happy with it. 
Okay, next up, another blind buy. Really happy with this. Uh, this is Bob Meehan Band, and he had a couple albums. This was his first one, and this is The Dancer. And the funny story around this is... Bob Meehan actually released this in, um, as a private press in 1975, and an executive from Capitol heard him live and said, "I gotta sign the, I gotta sign you. Um, this band's incredible. Uh, he's from uh, Arizona, and he played at this place called the Pawn Brokers all the time, kind of like that house band there. And you know, an exec from Capitol found him and signed him to Capitol. So this was 1976." Pressing on Capitol, this is the re-recorded, re-released. It has a slightly different track list, different track order than the original Private Press. I am on the hunt for the Private Press, uh, which has a different cover, different track order, and a slightly different track list, and obviously the original recordings. Um, but you got to have both. This one's on Capitol. Again, bought it because of the cover. And, you know, it was sealed, so super cheap. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it sealed and I'm like, yeah, I got to take a chance on it. And boy, am I happy with it. Um, great Laurel Canyon, some Laurel Canyon country, cosmic country, some um, acid pop, some pop psych and some straight ahead AM gold, 1970s AM gold pop. Um, so really a nice mixture of all that. Um, I love AM gold 70s pop. So Right up my alley. Can't go wrong there. Uh, next up, um, Psyche Derek, I think, showed this. And you know what? It was nice to see it in the wild. Paige Claire uh, on the... Um, this is a a um, promotional press, MGM. This jockey press. Really good, dreamy pop psych. Um, so uh, I don't tend to gravitate towards female singers, but... Of course, I have plenty in my collection, but um, I don't know what it is. I've always been more into the male singing. <laughs> but um, this is, she is fantastic. Super dreamy. Um, really good. Got some nice reverb and echo on there. Uh, and it's so clean, too. Look at the back of this. And there she is. Super cute. Um, but the back is so clean. So I had to pull the trigger on it. Sounds equally as good. Um, I would say a nice VG Plus copy. And uh, was reasonably priced at Welfare Records as always. So thank you, Psyche Derek, for the recommendation. And thank you, Welfare Records, for having it in stock. Next up, um, been on a little bit of a Dave Edmonds kick, especially um, his rock pile years, because I've been on a Nick Lowe kick. And this is um, the first one he did with Rockpile and Nick Lowe. Subtle as a flying mallet. <laughs> so if you like power pop and a little rockabilly in your diet, of course, um, Dave Edmonds and Nick Lowe and Rockpile. Can't go wrong there. 1975, right up my alley. So fantastic stuff. Uh, next up is... Another blind buy, Manchild, Manchild 1. Um, definitely a uh, country rock feel to this one, but with really nice harmonies. And it's kind of unique uh, on the Capitol label. Definitely unique. Um, five bucks in the shrink. Can't go wrong there. So took a chance on it and actually really like it. Um, so if you like uh, a little bit of alt country, um, with a little bit of craziness thrown in there. Manchild 1 is good. A um, <clears throat> couple more here. Um, this is um, Fluff? Fluff. <laughs> Boss Sound Band from Boston. Um, this is a late 60s uh, on Verve. And if you like, um, you know, that Ultimate Spinach and bands like that, uh, you will love it. Of course, uh, thank you, Welfare Records, In the Shrink, Near Mint, all the way around. No hole punches, no cutouts, which was so common with this one. Um, so I was super glad to see this on the wall. And I got such a killer price on it. So I um, had to pull the trigger on it. I've been looking for it, but I didn't want to spend like, you know, 80 bucks on it. 
Uh, so I was able to procure that for uh, even less than half of that. So really great. Uh, next up, um, John Hyatt right here called Slow Turning. Um, had the hype sticker and the shrink. And again, I like my, uh, I like country rock and alt country. And uh, this has that going on. 1989. So had to get that. <clears throat> that was at Welfare Records as well. Couple more. Here's a real cool find. This is um, Danny and Dusty, The Lost Weekend in the shrink and check out the hype sticker these are this band is like an all-star band featuring members of dream syndicate green on red which is um i've been into uh Kikavis, i think his name is been getting his solo stuff um lately and then um the long riders so it's like an all-star band and this is 1985 Definitely uh, alt country here. So again, if you like cosmic country, alt country, um, 1985 style, you will dig this for sure. And I like all three of these bands, so um, it's a no-brainer for me. All right, a few more. Oh, I've been on a little bit of an Alessi kick, the Alessi Brothers. Uh, again, if you like um, 70s pop and BG style with different vocals, obviously the harmonies are beautiful. They don't sound like someone squeezing their nuts. Um, not that I don't like, I like the Bee Gees, but uh, the vocals are a little different here. Um, you know, I like the harmonies are a little more creamy, uh, a little more in my wheelhouse. So <clears throat> if you like uh, the pop that the Bee Gees were putting out, then you will love Alessi, Alessi uh, Words and Music. And it was sealed for a couple bucks. So, of course, I'm going to get that. Um, and I think, I thought I had a couple more. I do. All right. Uh, this was a in order from Vinyl Me Please. This is um, Moonblood by Fraction. I think uh, most of you probably put an order in for this. Um, the beauty of this is it's, um, it's hand numbered, unlike the others, out of 300. Uh, and it doesn't have any of the pressing issues that people have been complaining about. Um, there's been a lot of complaints about warping and noise, um, with the Noble Records Press and, um, some of the other ones that are out there. No such problem with this whatsoever. And boy, is it stunning. Just a beautiful cloudy blue and which really goes well with like, this is daylight. That's night. Moon blood is out at night. And I like their choice to do like the cloudy blue. I really do. Um, so everyone's doing like red and opaque red and black and red and red splatter, but you know what? The blue was a great touch, um, limited to 300. So bravo to vinyl me, please. They really did a nice job. Super flat, super quiet. So seek out the, if you were unhappy, if you are unhappy with your pressing, if you did order one. From one of the other companies and you're unhappy with it seek out a v uh vinyl me please i know there's only 300 and it's probably sold out by now um but you can get one on the secondary market i'm sure it won't be too much um so but definitely highly recommend that uh because the pressing is just so much nicer uh and i guess that oh wait uh we have one more I haven't listened to this one yet. This was um, a blind buy Ford Theater. Time changes, a new musical. So my understanding is like um, pop psych. So I do want to check this out. I haven't heard it yet, so I can't really comment on it. But um, I'm looking forward to listening to it at some point. So anyways, hey, thanks for watching um, my recent vinyl finds from a couple record shops and one special order there. Uh, appreciate you guys as always please if you like what you see in here hit subscribe hit the bell 
for notifications. More content coming. Um, I really need to start showing some of my uh, my more modern collection, like um, the stuff I have from the 80s, 90s. Uh, I think you'll really love that. Um, so some of that to come, um, and we'll go from there. But, hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you later.